It's been almost two years since I started my channel here on YouTube, which is crazy to think about. And in that time, I've learned a lot about filming, lighting, audio, and editing. I started out using Premiere Pro on my PC, then I moved to LumaFusion on iPad and then finally over to Final Cut Pro when I went back to the Mac. Well, after about a year with Final Cut Pro, I finally standardized on a workflow that works for me most of the time. So I wanted to share with you how I edit and organize my Final Cut projects. Sponsored by Skillshare. Hey, I'm Jerry. And learning any new editing tool takes some time and patience. But with a little bit of practice, you will find ways to improve your workflow. Now, instead of doing a deep dive of how I edit a video from start to finish with Final Cut Pro, I'm assuming you have a little bit of experience with Final Cut and that there are a couple things that I do that might make your life a little bit easier, like creating templates from an organized event library, editing multicam, where to get some music, and maybe even skipping the color grading. So let's just start off with how I organize my libraries. With a brand new Final Cut library, you get some default events built in. The first one is a smart collection, which will kind of organize your video and audio for you separately. We're gonna go ahead and keep that closed. And then you get an event automatically for the date that you create the library. I don't generally use the built-in libraries, so we're gonna go ahead and rename that to something else. For me, I like to categorize and organize mine by the type of footage I'm taking. So this one is going to be the A roll, and then I'm gonna create additional ones as well. So we're gonna create another event for B roll, if I can spell it correctly. And we'll create one more just for C roll because you never know how many different types of footage I might have. And then I'll usually keep one that's also called other. So I'll just make sure it's always at the bottom. So I'll put a Z in front of it and other. And that way I have these different areas where I can put the footage that I need and I can easily find it the way I want it organized. Now I'm also going to create an event called assets or A space assets. So it's always at the top. And that has things that I reuse in a lot of my videos. It could be music, it could be PNG files, things like that. So again, A space assets and that'll make sure it's always at the top. And here's a number of things that I call assets that I wanna have in a number of my videos. So I'm gonna drag a couple of them over. One is YouTube audio, and we'll get to music here uh, in just a little bit. And then we're gonna have, let's see, images, PNG, we'll add those two assets. And I guess that's it for now. Oh, sounds, we'll add sounds as well. So now you can see I have sounds, and I'll show you that a little bit later. YouTube audio, this is YouTube music from the YouTube audio library. And then of course I have images, different PNGs that I might use frequently for different things. And the last thing I wanna add is the project file inside of the A-Roll folder. And this is where you're going to be doing all of your editing, bringing in all of your footage, editing it, and that's where your video is actually going to be. We'll just leave that as untitled project for now. Now the secret here is that you don't need to set this up every time. You don't need to create this folder structure every single time you start a new project with Final Cut. You can actually save this library as a template and use it for every video going forward. So let me show you how I do that. So inside your movies folder, inside your home folder, you'll have that file, the default location where Final Cut saves things. And we'll just go ahead and rename that Final Cut project to, let's say, FCP template. And now what we can do is we can actually just right click and hit compress FCP template. And this will take just a few seconds to compress. And when it's done, we can easily create new projects from that zip file. So now we have our FCP template.zip. If I wanna create a new project, all I need to do is double click that. It's going to extract it into a new file. And here we can rename it. So let's say it's the M1X MacBook. And no, I definitely don't have an M1X MacBook. So now if we just double click on our new project file, it'll open up. As you can see, we are inside of our M1X MacBook project. We have our assets that we already added before, and we have all of our folders or events that we created as well. So we don't have to recreate those every single time, which is awesome. All right, so now we're gonna be importing some footage off this SD card for the A-Roll, and I'm going to be using the CalDigit Soho dock to actually connect my SD cards and pull them in. Final Cut Pro will automatically see that you inserted an SD card and ask you to import it. We're gonna select the file we want to import. We're gonna select where it's going to go. We're gonna put it in the A-Roll, and we'll click import, and that's gonna take just a minute or two to import that file fully into Final Cut Pro. 
And when that's done, I'm going to also import my B-roll, my other camera, right? Because I have two cameras. I have my main camera and I have my secondary camera. And then if I have other additional camera angles or maybe video recordings that are all in sync together, that's all going to go into the A-roll. The B-roll footage, the secondary footage that sits on top of the A-roll, that will go into my B-roll folder. I also record my audio separately from a Zoom F6 connected to an MKH416 microphone, which together, those two are amazing. And those are also going to get put into the A-roll folder. So the audio along with all of my A-roll camera angles will all get edited together with multicam, which I'll show you in just a second. So now the audio file along with my two A-roll camera angles will be all edited together with multicam editing. So we'll just right click the three of these together. We'll click new multicam clip and that's going to synchronize everything automatically and put them all together, of course. And from there, we can simply do the rough edit cut of the A-roll footage. And we'll just go ahead and reorganize these clips a little bit. Close that. And now we can see our angles here. So now you can see the different angles here from the A-roll footage. So two camera angles and separate audio to get what will become the A-roll track. Now to quickly edit your rough cut of your A-roll video, there's plenty of videos on YouTube about this really. You really just wanna focus on the audio track, right? You wanna look at the audio wavelengths to be able to quickly edit what you're looking at. All right, to make it a little bit easier to see, we'll go ahead and just, so we can get the larger view of the audio signal, the audio wavelengths down there, and we'll make that larger as well. And now we can actually see where it might be easier to make our edits and our cuts, and we'll change this. We'll just hit the number one to change the angle to that one, or you can just click up here as well. So if you're editing here, let's say the video starts right here, we'll delete everything behind it. And we wanna switch angles right here. We can just click up here to switch to that angle, or we can hit the number two as well. So if we wanna go back and forth between this clip and that clip, we can hit play and just tap the number one on the keyboard or the number two to switch back and forth. So I'll hit play and it's going, I'll hit one and it switches angles, and I hit two, and it switches angles. And so I'll go through this entire thing, cutting this up, getting rid of all of the stuff I don't need to come up with a single rough cut somewhere around 10 minutes or so. So now with the edit of the A-roll rough cut basically complete, I wanna add some B-roll footage on top of it to add some context about what I'm talking about. So for example, if I'm talking about the webcam on top of the iMac, I probably wanna go ahead and include some B-roll of showing that camera cutout a little bit close up. All right, so let's go ahead and close these angles and we'll look at my B-roll again. And I know I have, there it is right there. So I actually have a close up of the camera on the iMac. So we'll just go ahead and select some of it that I wanna take. Maybe I just want that section right there. And maybe I'm talking about the iMac camera right here. So I'll just go ahead and remove the volume on that. And now as it's playing through the A-roll and I'm talking, it's going to show the cutout on top of the iMac as I'm speaking. Then maybe a little bit further on, I wanna show how you can connect an external display to the iMac M1. So I got some footage for that as well. So if I wanna show how the iMac works with an external display, I can find that video. I can find the portion of the clip that I wanna use, select it, and drag it onto the video, which is gonna be over here, I believe. And great. So now when I hit play, I'll be talking about how you can use the iMac with an external display and it will actually show it on top of the A-roll as well. So there you go, I'm talking about the iMac and I'll be dragging from the iMac screen over to the external display. Awesome. So that's my process of adding B-rolls on top of my A-roll inside of Final Cut Pro. One of the next things I do is I add the transitions throughout the video if I need them. I always have one at the beginning. It always kind of starts like, hey, I'm Jerry. And that was my transition. So let me show you how I do that. All right, so at the beginning of the video, I always have that kind of first introduction and then my name introduction like this. Great, so that's where it is. And now I'm just going to go to the built-in transitions in Final Cut Pro. I'm going to go to the lights and I'm going to drag this bloom over here. And I'm gonna shorten this up to about 15 frames. And then you'll see like so. Awesome. Now to make it just a little bit better, we're gonna go ahead and add that sound that I always have on there as well, the kind of iPhone sending message sounds. So we're just gonna drag that down here, kind of go to right around the middle. And then I'm going to drag the audio wave so it's right there as well. 
and we're gonna bring that down about 12 decibels, otherwise it's too loud. But you can see how that works out right here. Even better. And Jerry. And that's how I add simple transitions into my videos. Now, if you wanna get really fancy with it, there's all kinds of third party plugins and different things you can buy to work with Final Cut Pro. Motion VFX has hundreds or thousands of built-in like kits and transitions and effects and all kinds of different things that you can buy. They're not a sponsor, but I really like one of them in particular called MTuber 2. And MTuber 2 comes with a number of different little things, but really the only ones that I use is the zoom, so I can zoom in and out of things. And I also use these little animations for like reminding people to subscribe. So take this as a reminder to you know subscribe and hit the bell and all that jazz. And using the MTuber plugins is just as easy as using the built-in Apple ones. You drag what you want, you can expand it or shrink it to fit the size that you need it to do. And this one is just going to zoom in. So we're going to adjust that so that when I'm talking, maybe it's emphasizing something really important or maybe even funny, God forbid. And when it's all set, we'll just go ahead and go back and we'll hit play. And you can see as I'm talking, it's going to zoom in nice and slow and smooth. And then at the end, it's going to zoom out. And there's different settings you can configure with each one of these to customize it the way you want it to be. Now, when I was talking about assets earlier, I mentioned YouTube music. So inside of the YouTube studio, down at the bottom, you have this audio library. So there's thousands of songs that you can choose to create your own music library for your own videos. There's plenty of other paid services out there if you want different types of music. But for my needs, I really just need a really light music to kind of cover up some of the room noise in the room underneath you know, what I'm saying, underneath my recordings. And so the YouTube audio library actually does a pretty good job of it and actually has some pretty decent stuff if you wanna go beyond how I use it, right? You wanna use it for dramatic B-roll or some kind of suspenseful transition or some kind of buildup. You can do that with the music on YouTube audio library for free. So you can just scroll through a whole list of different things. You can find something that sounds interesting and hit play and listen to it. And then you can just go ahead and download it on the side down to your computer and you can add it to your videos or to your libraries like I showed you earlier. You can also search and filter by genre, mood, artist, and duration to find just the type of thing you're looking for. So for example, if you're looking for something that is, let's see, uh, angry. Yeah, angry or dark, that's what I want. So we're gonna get something like that that's kind of ambient and dark and that probably fills in the background of your music pretty well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So once I know which music I'm going to use, I'm going to just drag it down into here and maybe I want these two. And we'll of course cut it off here because that's where my video ends. And then I'm going to lower the volume down below and you do whatever you need to do. Of course, there's different configurations and settings you can do for music to enhance your video if that's what you want to do. But for me, it's just, like I said, very basic background music down to about negative 41. So it just kind of plays in the background to cover up some of my room noise. And that's pretty much it for my editing of my videos. Now you might be wondering about color grading and things like that. I actually don't do any color grading anymore. I tried it for a long time, but I'm using an 8-bit camera, actually two 8-bit cameras. I have two Sony A-Series A6400s and they shoot an 8-bit if I wanna use S-Log or something like that. And I had a lot of issues. I spent a lot more time trying to color grade my video than just getting it out the door. I got tired of messing with that. So for at least right now, that's not something I do. I actually shoot with my Sony cameras set with the color profile off. So the colors that you're seeing are actually the colors coming out of the camera and I'm actually pretty happy with them. The one thing I would recommend though is you make sure to set the white balance. So different cameras are gonna set them in a little bit different way. I would get a gray card, something like that. So you can actually set the white balance to the light in your room to make sure it's always consistent and it doesn't change around depending on the light in your room or light coming through the window or something like that. So for me, I just wanna set the white balance, let the camera worry about the color science and then I can focus on the other things. But if you're interested in learning more about color grading or more intricate techniques of editing, then definitely check out our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes to learn new skills, including topics on illustration, design, freelancing, filmmaking, and more. Skillshare is for lifelong learners and real working creatives made by other creatives. Millions of us are using these curated classes that are built to fit any schedule and skill level. One of the things I'm trying to be better with is my productivity on this channel. And Ali Abdallah has an amazing class on productivity for creators that walks you through strategies and tools for managing your time, attention, and ideas. One of the best parts was when Ali talked about time management in part eight, where he discusses how work expands to fill your time allotted. 
This taught me that I need to set schedules and stick to them to help be more efficient and productive. I can't wait to get through the rest of the class and hopefully level up my skills. If you're working on something creative and you wanna check out Ali's class, you can do that today. And the first 1,000 people that use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium. And my thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So that's pretty much the basics of how I edit and organize videos using Final Cut Pro. And I hope you found some of that helpful. I'm coming up on the two year anniversary of making my channel here on YouTube. And so if you're interested in other processes that I use to make videos or behind the scenes stuff, let me know below. I've made a number of different videos on my channel from Macs and iPads to how to's and software and even NAS stuff. And the YouTube algorithm thinks that you're gonna love this video right over here. So check that out. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.